Hey guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV, and today I'm at my brother's house because he asked me to help him drain and flush his water heater. And about that, I often get asked, is it really necessary to drain and flush a water heater regularly? And to summarize my reply, the answer is, for about 85% of people, it's better if they simply don't touch their water heater at all. Just let it do its thing, don't drain it, don't flush it, don't even look at it, just completely ignore it and let it do its thing. I've worked on many, many water heaters and I've seen plenty of them over 20 and 30 years old, sometimes even over 40 years old, and the homeowner said they never flushed them or drained them even once. So from my own experience, which, by the way, you are free to agree with or disagree or add on to in the comments below, I'd love to see you there. So in my personal opinion, I believe that for most people, it's better if they just leave their water heater alone. Especially if your water heater is over 10 or 15 years old and you've never flushed it or drained it before, chances are, if you start touching the valves, like the pressure relief valve or the drain valve, then they might start to leak and you're not going to be able to close them off all the way. So now you just created more problems. In those cases, honestly, with older water heaters, it's best to just not touch them. Let sleeping dogs sleep. So how would you decide if you need to drain and flush your water heater or not? My brother, for example, the reason I'm going to do this on his water heater right now is because he has a water catchment system that's literally catching rainwater in a big metal tank outside, and he's using rainwater to supply water to his whole house. Or if you have well water, or if you have water that you know has a lot of mineral content or is hard water, then you may want to consider draining and flushing your water heater. From my experience, it seems like electric water heaters have a bigger problem with this, the sediment and calcium buildup, than gas water heaters, and that's because of the heating elements, especially the lower heating element on an electric water heater. Oftentimes that sediment will build up to that lower element and it'll cause it to burn out faster. So if you're working on an electric water heater and the lower element is burnt out, when you replace that, I would also make sure to take a look through that hole and see how much sediment buildup is inside of that tank. If there's a lot of flakes and other sludgy material, then you might want to stick a pipe in there with a vacuum attached and suck that stuff out. Take some water, squirt it in there, maybe from a garden hose, squirt it backwards, stir it all up and just keep sucking that stuff out or maybe attach a drain hose to the drain line and drain it out as much as you can and get most of that stuff out of there. As for gas water heaters, it doesn't seem to be as big of an issue. Operationally, it doesn't really affect it. The only difference though, I mean, if you have a layer of sediment and buildup that's about this much on the bottom of the tank, when the burners come on, on the gas water heater, that burner has to heat through that layer of sediment first before it starts to heat the water up. So efficiency wise, it does cut down on efficiency, causing your water heater to run longer. To make a long answer short, if you were to ask me, do I need to drain my water heater? Most likely I would say no, unless you know for a fact that your water quality is not very good, or if you have a well or a water catchment system. Anyway, if any of you are interested in what the water is gonna look like coming out of my brother's water heater, we're about to find out. I already asked him to turn the power off to the electric water heater before I came. So it's been off for about three hours and they've been using the hot water. So most of the water in the tank has cooled off. If you have a gas water heater, then you want to turn the gas to pilot or to off and let it cool off that way. And then you simply attach a drain hose. This is a regular garden hose and preferably you want a short hose, not like a 100 foot hose or a 50 foot hose. What I have hooked up right now is a 15 foot hose. That way it'll drain a little faster. By the way, I noticed that this drain cap was on here, which reminded me. Oftentimes, whenever I go out to customers' houses and they don't want to pay for a new drain valve, if it's leaking just a little bit and tightening it does not stop the leak, if they don't want to pay for a new drain valve, I just tell them, you know what, we can just simply put on a brass cap with a seal in it, and that will be plenty enough to stop that leak. And really, that's all you need. If you have a really slow, small leak, then go ahead and just throw a cap on the drain valve and you should be good to go. Okay, so I got my drain hose hooked up. And before I open up my valve, I'm going to turn off the water supply to the water heater. That way it's not going to be refilling as I'm draining it. Next, what I like to do is open up a couple of hot water faucets in the house to help the water heater drain faster. Open the hot side of the faucet and leave it open. The water should come to a slow drip. Now I'm ready to open up the drain valve. Depending on what drain valve you have, you might need to go counterclockwise continually to unscrew it, 
or in my case, I just have to do a quarter turn to open up the valve. It's just a ball valve and that will get the water going. And as you can see, there's nothing coming out on the other side of the hose. Before I do anything else, I'm gonna try to blow backwards into this hose and see if I can dislodge any of that stuff in there. In some cases, opening the hot water faucets is not gonna be enough. Your water heater will either drain super, super slowly or it won't drain at all. In those cases, you might need to open your pressure relief valve to let some air in from the top of the tank so that the water can come out easier. Or you could also crack open one of these fittings on the cold supply, either the top or the bottom of this flex line to let some air in that way. If I can, I try to avoid pulling the pressure relief valve too often because once you pull this thing, it might start to leak and you may end up having to replace it. And it looks like pulling the pressure relief valve did the trick. The water heater now started to drain. As you can see, we already got half a bucket full and it actually looks like the water is not too bad coming out. I was expecting it to look a lot more dirty and some more grime and slushy looking stuff coming out, but it's not looking too bad. The water heater is gonna take some time to drain. So while it's draining, there's one more thing I wanna point out. This drain valve port, it's actually sitting about an inch or an inch and a half away from the bottom of the tank on electric water heaters and on gas water heaters, same thing. It's actually not on the very bottom of the tank. So what I'm gonna do right now is drain the whole water heater and then I'm gonna open up the cold water supply and let the water rush in from the top and just stir up anything that's on the bottom of that tank and get it to come out of here. And about 10 minutes later, I think it's completely done draining. There's no more water coming out of the hose. And sometimes, depending on how fast the water is coming out, it could take a while. Um, but generally, if there's no problems, no blockage, then five to 10 minutes is what I've noticed. I'm gonna put this bucket on the hose a little bit. So now that it's fully drained, we're gonna to proceed to flush it to try to stir up that junk on the bottom. So let's go ahead and open up our supply valve again and let the water rush in. This time during the flush, the water does look a little bit worse Still not as bad as I expected, but it is dirtier. So what I'm gonna do is continue to flush it a couple of times until this water coming out is not gonna be this dirty. Okay, the first flush is done. Let's proceed with the second, the third, and fourth, and hopefully it's not gonna take too many times. Keep in mind that the higher your hose is, the less the water pressure is and the less stuff coming out. Optimally, you want the hose on the same level I mean the outlet of the hose, you want it on the same level as the drain valve or lower if possible. See, once I lowered it, a bunch more gunk is coming out. I've seen much worse than this, but I mean, there is quite a bit of sand in here. For my brother, it's actually worth doing this yearly. Otherwise, this stuff is gonna accumulate real quick. And what I like to do during the flushing part is to turn off the supply until the water stops flowing out of the hose and then open it back up and then keep closing it and opening it that way over and over because I don't want the water to fill up too much because the whole point of the flushing is to stir up the stuff on the bottom of the tank. This is flush number six and there's a lot less sand and other junk coming out of the drain. So I think I'll do it just one last time and call it a day. In my case, the water flow is really good, but if the water was barely coming out, even with the pressure relief valve open, or if it's coming out really, really, really slowly, then that would be an indicator to me that there's a lot of sediment buildup. And in that case, the best thing to do would be probably to take out that lower element and try to vacuum out and scoop out as much of that sediment from the bottom of the tank as I can. After I'm done flushing the water heater, I turn the drain valve off and remove the drain hose. Next, I like to slowly open up the supply or just crack it open at first, just a little bit. 
and then look down at my drain valve to make sure that there's nothing leaking out of it. Once I confirm that there's no leaks, then I go ahead and open it up all the way. If you opened your pressure relief valve, don't forget to close it back up. And after the water heater fills up, if there's water leaking out from the other end of this pipe, then you could try to open and close this valve a couple of times. Basically you're exercising it. Try to open it and close it a couple of times and hopefully that will reposition the valve so that it seals up nicely. Sometimes it just doesn't close all the way, but if you move it back and forth a couple times, that's all it takes. If there's still a small leak, another thing you can try is just smacking it with a wrench on the side a couple of times. Sometimes if you get lucky, that will be enough. But if no matter what you do, the thing still continues to leak, then you have no choice but to replace the pressure relief valve or live with the leak. While the water heater is filling up, I like to open up a hot water faucet anywhere in the house, or maybe even a couple of them, to get all of the air bubbles trapped in the tank out of the system. A bunch of air and probably a little bit of dirty water will come out of your faucet. When the water flows freely without any bursts of air, then you should be good to go. After the water heater fills up, don't forget to turn the power or the gas back on. That is all I had for you today. Thank you so much for joining me in the draining and the flushing of my brother's water heater. If you have anything to say about what you just saw, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out and I'll see you next time. Whoa, Jay. Did you get a haircut? What was that? A haircut? No, no, I got them all cut.